All right, Melissa, treating coronavirus is taking millions of dollars out of the nation's medical system and threatening resources in that system. In fact, the former Veterans Affairs Secretary, David Shulkin, is warning that U.S. hospitals could lose more than $500 billion in 100 days during the pandemic. Here now from Thomas Jefferson University and Jefferson Health, the president and CEO, Dr. Stephen Clasco. Dr. Clasco, tell us about your facility, your hospital. What's the, the financial situation? Yeah, so, so the great news is that we were very prepared for the pandemic. We had one of the largest telehealth networks in the country. We, we had a pandemic surge group, so we had 60 days PPE. But like everybody else, we're losing hundreds of millions of dollars a month by doing the right thing. Let me give you one example, Connell. Uh, we use 15,000 gowns a day. Um, and gowns that used to cost us 20 cents now cost $11. So you can pretty quickly do the math at a time where less people are having uh, elective surgery. So it's, it's a huge issue for the economy because that part hasn't even been factored in yet. We're one of the largest employers in Philadelphia. Almost every health system is a large employer. And as those numbers, the hangover of those numbers, it's going to have huge effects on investments, on employees, on unemployment, and, and, and many other things. As bad as it is, I think a lot of people look at it and think that it'll come right back once we reopen. Those elective surgeries will start up again. However, I saw you quoted as saying in the state of Pennsylvania, there was, you know, you could losing already $9 billion and only 30% of that might come back. Is that right? Only 30%? Well, well, 30, we, we, we think that about 30% will come back from uh, government CARES acts and, and, and other COVID related pieces. The biggest issue for, for your audience, though, Connell, is, is getting people to understand that they can talk to their doctor and get safe care. That's what we're concerned about, that people are afraid to come into the, into the system. Literally, we, we call it sort of the, the uh, pan didn't, because about 60% of people didn't get the care that they need. That's emergency care. Cardiology, oncology, breast health, did not get the care that they need to prevent a heart attack to prevent breast cancer. So we're concerned about the crisis of collateral damage and that people won't come in uh, for those procedures uh, post the pandemic. So I think that's actually something that you guys can help yeah. a lot with, of having people understand how important that is. You don't just die from COVID, you die from lots of other diseases. Right. No, it makes a lot of sense. What's on the line here though, doctor, if they don't come back, if people are afraid to come back, you'd have to prioritize, right? There would be, <clears throat> there would be cuts. Have you had job cuts already? And then what might, you know, all of us lose in terms of the services that wouldn't be available if you had to make some tough decisions down the line. This is not sustainable. Right. It, it isn't. So I, th I think, look, I think um, we've had two hospitals go bankrupt in Philadelphia pre-COVID. So a place like Jefferson is very stable. We're A-rated. Um, it's going to be really uh, tough on us. We have not laid off or furloughed anybody else yet. Uh, we have a put people first mentality, but it's going to be increasingly hard. But there are going to be some safety net hospitals that frankly just go bankrupt or have to merge or have to get bought out. But here's the issue, Connell. I think this is an opportunity, mm -hmm. and I'm an optimist, for healthcare has gone kicking and screaming into the consumer revolution. We've talked about it, Jefferson, healthcare with no address, getting care out to the home well before COVID. You know, it, uh, one of the CEOs of, a, of finance had said to me, banking and healthcare used to be the two least consumer friendly entities. Now you're alone. So I think right. the, the places that are going to make it are the ones that can really start to look at how can healthcare get out to the home. And then you have to line the payer and provider. Because remember, the payers have gotten all the money. They're not putting it out. And I think if you don't have an aligned right. payer provider strategy, there's no way out of this. All right. Um, boy, important discussion about the financial side of this for hospitals. It hasn't been talked about as much maybe as it should be. Dr. Stephen Clasco, Jefferson Health. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll stay on top of this. Melissa?